Welcome Fresno State students to the President's Forum today with President Castro and with ASI President Omar Hernandez. My name is Patty Wade and I'm Director of University Communications and I'll be the moderator for the forum today. Uh, just a few guidelines for your participation in the event. Um, if you would like to submit a question, you can do so through the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. And please note that the questions that appear on the screen may not necessarily reflect the order in which they are being submitted. I just thought I'd mention that. And also, when some of the questions are a little long, I may paraphrase them just to keep the event moving along. So although time is limited, we'll do our best to answer as many questions as possible within the, this next hour. And uh, it is my great honor to uh, introduce you to Dr. Joseph Castro, president of Fresno State, as well as Omar Hernandez, who is president of ASI. President Castro, would you like to open with some remarks before we start taking questions from our students? I would, thank you, Patty. Good evening, everybody. And uh, hello to all the Fresno State uh, students out there. Um, I'm here in my office at the Henry Madden Library and I wanna begin by saying I miss you all. It's so quiet around here, but we're doing everything we can to be supportive of you at this time. I know it's a challenging period for all of us and especially for you. Uh, I know you don't have a chance to spend time with your, your friends. Uh, maybe you're not able to do that with family, uh, but I applaud your resilience and uh, your flexibility, your ingenuity, all those things are uh, great experiences that will prepare you uh, for your bright futures. Um, as you know, there's only two weeks left uh, for instruction this spring, and I want to just urge you all to finish strong. Uh, and if there's anything that we can do to be supportive of you at any time, uh, please let us know. And I've enjoyed connecting with many of you through social media. And if I can answer a question for you or help you find someone who can answer that question, don't hesitate to uh, connect with me at Joseph I. Castro. And uh, I wanted to especially say congratulations to our 6,000 plus graduates uh, here in the next few weeks. We're so very proud of you. I know how hard you've worked. I know many of you are the first in your families to graduate from college. Others of you are part of a legacy of Bulldogs for a generation or two or more. Uh, all of you make us so proud and we're excited that you're getting ready to graduate. And I promise you, we're gonna have a huge celebration when it's safe. Uh, as it relates to the fall, I want you to know as of today, we're planning to welcome all of you back to campus. I say that knowing that the situation is evolving uh, each and every day. And uh, as soon as we know for sure what the plan is for the fall, I will communicate that to you. And we're looking at different options right now. Uh, I promise you we will choose the one that's safest and that will support you uh, each and every day. I wanna congratulate those students who've already registered for the fall and urge you uh, to do that if you haven't done that. We've had thousands who've already done, who've already done that and I want you to do that by tomorrow if you can. Um, I also sent an email to you yesterday with some good news about uh, federal emergency grant funds that have come uh, or will come to Fresno State shortly. We've applied for them. We will have the opportunity to allocate $16 million to students in the coming uh, weeks or so. I, I, I'm anxious to get the dollars from the federal government you will see an application next week. We're gonna make it as uh, easy as possible uh, for students to get the funding, and we're gonna prioritize those who have the most financial need. So I wanna encourage you to stay tuned for more information about that. And also Governor Newsom today announced that 21 out of the 24 major student loan services have agreed to provide relief to college students. And for the next 90 days, there will be no late fees and no fines. So I encourage you to check that out to see if that 
uh, benefits you in any way. I wanna thank you all for participating today and I'm looking forward to the questions and I, I just wanna say thank you to our president of the ASI, Omar Hernandez, who's uh, coming to us from his home in Riverdale. And uh, you can see that pride of the valley behind him. Uh, Omar, thanks so much for being with me tonight. Absolutely, thank you for having me, President Castro. How's it going out there in Riverdale tonight? Uh, things are things are pretty good. The you know the weather's pretty good. It's good to be home, be around my family. Uh, you know, I know now is tough for everybody, but you know, I have I have good hopes and faith that we will get through this together. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your leadership. I greatly appreciate it. And Patty, uh, Omar, and I are ready to. Uh, hear feedback and answer questions from our talented students. Great, thank you, Dr. Castro. So the couple of two first questions that came in were regarding the CARES Act funding that you just talked about. One of the questions from Nicole is, um, when you state that 50% of the funding will go to emergency financial aid grants, where would the other 50% be going to? That's a great question. So we are going to receive about $32 million from the federal government. Approximately half will be used for these emergency grants. And then the other half is gonna help the university and other universities around the country deal with uh, losses of revenue that we've experienced. For example, when we had almost everybody move out of the residential halls and we refunded those fees to our students when we refunded parking fees, uh, those kinds of expenses. We, we also invested heavily in new in iPads and mobile hotspots for students who needed access to technology. So all those things together are going to be areas that we will use the other federal funding to support our students. Uh, we're also looking at the possibility of using some of it for the summer and to help students who are gonna be studying during the summer session. So stay tuned for more uh, information about that. Uh, but we're very thankful for the federal relief funds that we will receive. And uh, again, the $16 million will be allocated as quickly as possible. And we want students who need it to have those dollars as soon as we can get them out. So we're waiting for those. You'll see the guidelines and the application early next week. And then uh, we'll proceed from there as soon as we get the dollars, we'll allocate them as quickly as possible. Great, thank you. Sure. So I just wanna remind the students who are logging in now that if you have questions for Dr. Castro or for Omar Hernandez to feel free to enter your questions in the Q&A section and we will get to those just as soon as possible. Um, staying on the CARES Act funding question, uh, one question was, uh, will students have to fill out any paperwork to receive that emergency aid, and how would they know if they qualify? Another great question. Uh, we're still finalizing the process, but uh, in general, what will happen is uh, we know the students who have applied for financial aid in the past. We will use that information to make a determination about the award. For those students who actually uh, have not received financial aid from us in the past, we will make it easy for you. You can apply to us and we will, um, we will review those quickly and provide a grant accordingly. Uh, so the way that it will work is if you've applied for financial aid and we've determined that you have a high financial need, you'll get a higher award than if you've been determined to have lower financial need. And so we're, the goal from the federal government is to help all students, and especially the ones that have suffered the most. Great, thank you. Sure. Uh, this is a question, I think we've answered it a few times, but it is important. Students are wanting to know when they will get their parking refund. Aha, yes. Another great question. Uh, I will double check after we get off the forum tonight, but I believe it will be any day now. Uh, we've been working hard to process all of these refunds, the housing and the parking and the graduation ones. And as you can imagine, we've done that with 
a smaller team because so many are working remotely and, and so forth. But I promise you that that's coming within the next few days. If you have not yet received it, it's on the way. And I'll keep you posted uh, through social media. If you're not seeing it by next week, please let me know and I'll look into it for you. Thank you. Sure. See, this next question is about student um, assistants, student employees. And the question is, when it comes to next academic year starting in the fall, when would students know more about student employment and if they will have their jobs next year? That's another great question. As you might know, if you're a student assistant, we made the decision to support our student assistants through the whole spring semester. Uh, those who are funded through the state and those are funded by our auxiliaries. So if you are a student assistant at Fresno State, we've supported that. That's not the case at every university, but we have made that commitment to you as our students and want to do our best to help you uh, succeed. As it relates to the fall semester, what I can tell you is that we're reviewing our budgets. We will know more in May uh, from the governor what the May revise of his budget is going to be. And then because there's been a delay in tax receipts to the state of California to July instead of April, we won't know the final state budget until uh, the early part of, uh, well, the probably around August or so. And so um, we will need to see how that evolves and then make determinations about the jobs that we can continue, but we will prioritize student assistant positions in our budget going forward. So I would say stay in touch with your supervisor, let them know that you're interested in staying on, and then we will do our best together to support as many student assistants as we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there are some students, as you know, who are graduating next month, and they're asking if they can actually come to campus to take pictures for their graduation announcements. That's a great question, too. I've already seen some students do it. Um, I, you know, in general, we don't want to have large crowds here, and that's because of safety reasons. But if you want to come and take a quick picture, I totally understand that. I would just encourage you to do it in a safe way. And, uh, you know, there's a sign out on, uh, on Shaw if you want to go there and take a picture or, uh, you know, I, I would just be very careful as you're doing that. We, we're really trying to make sure that the social distancing stays in place. So, of course, we want to celebrate your graduation and, uh, yes, choose a safe spot to do it and it'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you. This next question is um, apparently a professor had asked his students to print out their exam and then scan the exam back to the professor. And this student is asking if that's okay to do. Well, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> what I will do is let me check on that. That's the first time I've heard something like that, but I appreciate your bringing that to my attention. And let me look into that and, if you wouldn't mind uh, sending me an email to the president's office uh, webpage, I would be happy to look into that and get back to you. Mm -hmm. Or you could send me a direct message on uh, Twitter or Instagram. Great. And the next question is also from someone who is graduating next month. Apparently, this person ordered a grad box and refunded because they thought it didn't come with the cap and gown. And now we're wondering if they can still order the cap and gown. I believe so. And uh, Patty, I might need your help here. Should we refer them to the bookstore or to the Alumni Association? Yeah, I believe to the bookstore. Okay. Yeah. So I contact the Kennel Bookstore, and I think you'll be able to uh, get it taken care of. It is open each day. I think the hours are on their website, but I think it's 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, but please check that and you might even call them if you're going to uh, come on to campus. They also have a website and you can see if you're able to take care of it that way as well. The next question is from an international student and if I'm understanding correctly, they are saying that um, they had to return home to their home country 
and they are concerned around uh, the inability to return to the United States to study in the fall. Yes, I, I completely understand. And I hope that you're safe wherever you are. That's the most important thing. Um, if you are not able to come back to Fresno State in the fall, um, we would work with you to provide courses that would be virtual. And um, I think what I would suggest that you do is contact Dr. Sarah Lamb and let her know of your situation. And I know that she and her team will help. Um, we've talked about students like you who are in that situation, and we want you to succeed. We want to get you across the finish line. So uh, we'll do everything we can uh, to help you do that. So I would suggest talking to Dr. Lamb about that. You could email her or give her a call. Mm -hmm. Great. This next question is also around student assistants, those who work on campus. Uh, the question is, would you consider allowing student assistants in the fall semester uh, to renovate websites? And this person says that the average student is probably much more willing to work with the websites than the average Fresno State employee. <laughs> <laughs> I love the creativity. Yay. Um, you know, Patty, we should take that up and uh, look into that. I think it's a great sure. idea. I do, too. So we'll, we'll work on that. I love the idea. And it sounds like you're, you're volunteering. The student is asking about this. So terrific. I love it. <laughs> so the next two questions are around the fall and then even into the spring of 2021. I'll merge it into one question. Okay. So what would the plan be if the quarantine extends into the fall and then into the spring? Would the classes um, be virtually online or would they be in person? So there are three options that we're looking at right now. One option would be uh, just like the campus was before COVID. So going back to a more traditional delivery of instruction. The second one would be some uh, virtual instruction like we're at right now. And the third one would be a hybrid where some would be offered virtually and some courses would be offered on the campus. We're looking at those three options in depth and we're gonna follow the, uh, guid the guidance and advice of our public health experts and make a decision about the fall, I would say by around the middle of May. And uh, we'll, we'll assess the situation at that time and we'll make a determination that's in the best interest of all of you and, um, and if we do end up continuing to go virtual or in a hybrid fashion, we would be doing additional professional development for our faculty. And, uh, and also we would continue our technology programs to make sure that students had access to iPads and hotspots. Uh, we just don't know yet. Uh, this is such a fluid situation that we you know, every day matters. And, uh, and so in a couple of weeks, we'll see where we're at. We'll see what Governor Newsom is saying about the shelter in place for California and rules that might evolve over the next few months. And then we'll make the best determination we can to support all of you as our students. Great. This next question is for Omar, um, having to do with ASI. If Omar, could you give us an update about the ASI presidential situation and please keep us in the loop? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yesterday we did have a Senate meeting uh, and currently the, the situation uh, happening right now, the, the president-elect has, uh, has actually petitioned against the, the decision of the student court. So, uh, the next steps now will be going to uh, uh, Dr. Kuhn, the, the Dean of Students. So she will um, actually be informing us of her decision, uh, hopefully very soon. And, and we'll, keep, we'll keep all our students updated on our ASI page, as well as on our social media. I know we've been, we've been doing our best to make sure that um, everything that happens within this case actually gets put out for the students to see. Uh, we do have one more Senate meeting, that, which is two weeks away on a Wednesday at four o'clock. So I wish, uh, you know, if, if you guys are interested, 
um, and there hasn't been any update yet, we should expect some then. Great, thank you. Um, this question is very specific. I don't know if either of you would know, where do graduates buy their department tassels? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I actually don't know the answer to that. Do you, Omar? <laughs> Given that I'm not graduating this semester, I actually do not either. We will find out though, if, you, uh, if you'll just send me a, what do you think, Patty? Should I have them send me a, an email to my president's office uh, web uh, page or what do they you They could think? do that or they could also tag Fresno State on Twitter or on yeah. Instagram and we can answer their question once we find out. Good idea. So we promise you we'll get you an answer. I, I'm learning about a lot of things that I didn't know about in specific through this you know, situation. It's been great. <laughs> We're all learning. Uh, this, next question, this next question has to do with athletics. And yes. sports. So what will sports look like for the fall 2020 if things don't get better? Will there be a need for tryout sports such as the spirit program or for marching band? Yeah, that's a great question as well. Um, it will depend on uh, where we are from a public health standpoint. And as I mentioned, uh, we're gonna make a determination about the fall sometime uh, middle part of May. Um, with the athletic situation, that, that will continue to evolve as well. And what I would say is we will make announcements as we know more in terms of when competition might be able to, to start again. Um, you know, there are some different contingency plans that we're assessing uh, depending on the circumstances in the fall, circumstances that might occur in the winter time and the spring. And, uh, and so it just depends on uh, where we're at in the next uh, month or so and the next few months. And I promise you, we will stay in touch. We really want to see our bulldog student athletes uh, back out there. And right before the forum, I, I asked Dr. Kuhn and Dr. Stewart if we could fire up our esports and do more mm -hmm. of that uh, in a competitive mode that's safe. And that I know people are interested in, in competition right now. And so uh, esports is something that we might be able to do more of in the coming months as we prepare for uh, the return of traditional athletics. Mm -hmm. I'm noticing a lot of uh, graduating students are jumping on with questions. All right. So this, one, this one has to do that um, since there won't be a graduation ceremony next month, the question is, um, will those students who will be completing graduation requirements in the fall, will they be able to partake in the ceremony perhaps at the end of this year, calendar year? Yeah, there's different options. and. Um, I'm anxious to celebrate with all of you as soon as it's safe. And if it looks like it will be safe to do that sometime in the fall, then we would do that. And, uh, you know, Omar is actually uh, involved in uh, some of the exciting ways to celebrate our graduates. And this might be a good chance, Omar, for you to talk about that as well. I appreciate your, your work on that. Absolutely. Uh, well, I know uh, we're not exactly ready to give all the information out, but I know that uh, we are definitely working on something for you guys in the meantime. Uh, by no means, you know, will, will we be trying to replace commencement in, in the spring? Uh, because we want you guys to have a real one, hopefully in the fall or as soon as we can, right? So the university has decided to postpone. Um, and by postponing, we mean postponing, not canceling. So we will, we've, we're working our hardest to make sure that every student gets the same opportunities as their, uh, as their predecessors and, and to, to make sure that they get to walk the stage um, and have their family get to cheer them on. In the meantime, we're working really hard to, to uh, bring some surprises in, in the spring. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys will you know, stay tuned and, and, and get involved because I think, I think uh, they'll be really fun. <laughs> and we just got a, an answer around the question where to get the tassel oh, they good. can purchase at the bookstore. At the bookstore. Terrific. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, this next question again around. Patty, can I just mention? Uh, yes, please. If, if you haven't been to the Kennel Bookstore lately, I was in there recently. There are a lot of great items there. And, uh, mm. you know, the prices are great right now, too. So just want to encourage folks to take a look because there's a lot of great bulldog gear that you might want for the summer. And uh, you could pick up your tassel and deal with the gowns and all that stuff. So just want to encourage folks to do that. Great, great. So Omar, um, an email went out before spring break about virtual events for seniors this spring. And the question is, what's the update with that? Uh, so that will continue, uh, hopefully towards the end of the semester. We, we do have some really cool stuff planned. Uh, it's not, uh, we don't have a strict schedule for you guys yet, but I anticipate that coming out very shortly as, as we're getting close to the end of the semester. But we are really excited to celebrate you guys. Uh, we are really proud of you guys. And, and while during this time, unfortunately, you, you won't be able to, to walk until you know, the fall or, or, or the next time um, we get to have a, a commencement for you guys. Uh, but we, we are really proud of you guys and we want to celebrate you guys nonetheless. Um, it, it, it'll be a little different than normal, but you know, we anticipate that hopefully as soon as we can, we will have a commencement for you guys. So in the meantime, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, messages will, will be sent out to make sure that you guys are all aware of, of the, uh, the celebrations we have for you guys. But uh, I'm really excited because I think they're going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> that sounds great. So this question is uh, regarding master's students. Uh, the person says that they heard that their department is not making the master's students defend their thesis this semester which is normally expected. And so the question is, is that allowed? That's a great question. It's the first time I've heard of that. So that's another one that I would be interested in knowing a little bit more uh, what program. And I'll be happy to look into that with the provost. I'm assuming that if they've decided to do it that, that way, that it is allowable. But I would like to just verify that with the provost and the appropriate dean. So please share that information with us and uh, we'll look into it for you. Right. And then no question here, but a nice comment from athletics director Terry Toomey. No matter the outcome, the Department of Athletics appreciates and loves the spirit of our community. Go dogs. All right. Go Thank dogs. you, Terry Toomey. Go dogs. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Let's see. Uh, some students are having a difficult time learning online. Will there be an option to drop a class without penalty, or will students only be given the option for credit, no credit? Thank you. I appreciate that question. Uh, the policy change that we made for this semester was to allow students to uh, change from a letter grade to a credit, no credit uh, later on in the semester at, at your choice. And um, we wanted to do that because we felt like it was important for uh, all of you to do the very best you can. And then depending on the circumstances and how you feel, uh, you would be able to make that judgment and we would review it and do uh, treat you fairly and appropriately. Uh, but the other deadlines, as far as I know, have stayed in place. And um, so I would just, again, encourage you, if you're having any difficulties right now with a course, I would encourage you to talk to the professor and, if necessary, the department chair as well. And we will do our, our very best to support you. Um, so I just wish you the very best. And, again, our policy was adapted there to – in the spirit of supporting our students and being flexible and reasonable and compassionate during this challenging time. <laughs> Great. Uh, this is from someone who appears to be registering for fall co courses. Great. Uh, there seems to be less course sections being offered in the fall and that some are being converted to online. So the question is, is this due to the uncertainty of returning? And will more sections be added if we do go back to campus in the fall? Thank you. Well, we have uh, 
we've actually assembled our courses uh, based on uh, the model that everybody would be coming back. And what happens sometimes in some subject areas is we will add course sections as we see demand rising. So it's kind of a dynamic process. And it could be that um, in, the, in the area that you're looking at, we have a certain number of courses now and then we would add more later uh, because the, the new freshmen actually uh, register for courses during dog days. So we, we add courses for them as well. Again, if you're having trouble getting classes, please reach out to your department chair and uh, you can reach out to me and I can, I can work with uh, Dean Bernadette Muscat who's available to support any of our undergraduate students. And so just let us know if we can be helpful in that way. But what I think you're probably seeing is that we will be adding more as we go along. And we've worked really hard to make sure that we have enough courses. And that's been one of our highest priorities while I've been president. So I wanna make sure if we have any gaps that we'll address those as aggressively as we can. Thank you. Thank you. So another question from someone who's graduating this semester. They wanted to know if it would be possible to have a social distancing photo op with a big bulldog on campus for those graduating this semester. Ah, that's a great idea. Let me look into that. Let me see if we can pull that off in a, a safe way. But I, I love the spirit of the idea. And uh, let, let's look into that. Talking, Patty is talking about the big, the blow up bulldog that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Let's see what right. we can do about that. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah, that's a great idea. So there's a um, student who's taking a class at Fresno City College that will transfer over to Fresno State. Yeah. And the person's asking, will he be able to petition to receive credit, no credit, like the new policy states? So uh, is he talking about a course at Fresno City or a course with us? I believe it's a course at Fresno City. And okay. to know if perhaps he could get credit, no credit there for it to then transfer to Fresno State. I see. Yeah. Well, because it's a Fresno City course, mm -hmm. I would encourage you to talk to them about that. And you'll have to follow the rules that they have. Uh, and you'll want to make sure that and when you're talking with them about it, that you don't do anything that hampers your transfer to Fresno State as well. So that's where talking to one of their advisors will be really important. But I, I don't know the ins and outs of Fresno City College's rating policies, but I'd encourage you to talk with them about that and, and get the information and make the best decision that you can. And we really want uh, you to come to Fresno State. So it sounds like this is a city college student coming here. Right, that's what I think. Yeah, or I mean, it's possible that it's a Fresno State student who's taking some city college classes too. Uh, but right. rating for that course is going to be according to their policies. So that's why I think talking to them is the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think you talked about this previously, Dr. Castro, but sometimes people log on to these sessions a little later. Yeah. The question is, if it's safe to do so, is there a possibility that classes would resume in person midway through the fall 2020, even if the fall 2020 semester started first online? Well, we are looking at different possibilities. Um, and one of the challenges that I think you're probably aware of is that there's a there's a possibility that we would have uh, another spike in uh, COVID cases uh, later in the fall, and so we're going to need to think that through carefully again with our public health experts. And one of the things that I worry about is having people come back for a period of time and then having to go back to virtual. That'd be very disruptive. But we're going to look at all of that uh, together and make uh, the best judgment we can. Again, with your public safety is the, the paramount concern. And then we'll make sure if we can do it, that we would have some or all courses uh, in person 
uh, according to the, the usual way. Uh, but I, I just want you to know that we all want you back. <laughs> we miss you. It's way too quiet. The squirrels have taken over. They're everywhere. <laughs> They're everywhere. And uh, they miss you too. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to do everything we can to help, help get you back because the spirit of Fresno State is all of you having you here on campus. Great. There's a, a question uh, regarding the CARES Act funding. Um, apparently, the funding that's uh, being provided through the federal government does not cover either undocumented, DACA, or international students. So the question is, how is Fresno State preparing to help these particular students who are also facing hardships? Thank you for that question. Every student at Fresno State matters. And uh, any student who has a need uh, gets served at Fresno State. And that's the case with all of our support services, including our student cupboard. And if anybody needs access to food, uh, the student cupboard is open right now and you can get food there at any time. We also have our Good Samaritan Fund that has been open to all students. The CARES dollars, as you said, uh, cannot be used for international or for undocumented students. So what we're doing is uh, we will include those groups of students in our overall program, but we will use other dollars to support them. And we're working together to identify those sources. It's probably gonna be a combination of, uh, of private funds and, and maybe some state funds. Uh, or campus funds, we are able to use those sources for international and for undocumented students. So there will be a program for those talented bulldogs and it will just be using a different source of funding. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, looking again towards the fall, one of the questions is, are you and fellow administrators taking into consideration the possibility of a second wave of, wave of COVID-19 that is said to return in the fall? We absolutely are. Um, I just a few days ago received some very um, valuable information about that possibility from one of our healthcare experts in Fresno and he's a, a Fresno State alumnus and has been quite, quite helpful to me. Um, so I do believe that there's a, a chance that that will happen uh, and we need to take that into account in our planning. Uh, we don't know when it would happen, but um, again, we will consult with public health experts uh, before we make any final decisions about the fall and we'll do everything we can to keep folks safe and to support you so that you can be successful as students. We want to keep you engaged at Fresno State. We want to make sure students continue to succeed. And as President Hernandez said earlier, this is a challenging time. Some students are, are dealing with uh, different kinds of challenges that make it harder for them to succeed. Uh, we want to know about those to the extent we can support you and, uh, and help you to, to succeed. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything more about that, President Hernandez. Yeah, um, mostly to the point that these conversations have have been uh, are still being had between us. You know, our students are our number one priority. So President Castro and I have have been you know discussing some of these things. For example, that that last question about uh, international students and undocumented students and, and DAGA students. Uh, we are devoted to devoted to making sure all our students uh, have the same opportunities. We know that. Uh, this, this uh, virus has definitely shared some inequities in, in, in what's going on and, and you know we're doing our best to address them uh, and to the point that even the, the student government has had these conversations uh, some of our senators have brought up these concerns and, and you know uh, you guys are always at the back of our minds when we make decisions so we're, we're doing our best to make sure uh, we stay ahead of the curve and, and stay ahead of the game so that we can um, you know get these tackle these issues before they come to us. Great. Thank you, Omar. 
So Melinda writes, this is not a question, but I want to express my gratitude for having such caring and compassionate leadership at Fresno State. Mm. Thank you for caring about every student and making us feel like family on campus. We appreciate you. Thank you, Melinda. That's heartwarming. I appreciate that so much. We truly are committed to your success and uh, I can say that's part of our whole team. We all have that uh, strong commitment. And I don't know, students, you may not all know this by heart, but our mission is to boldly educate and empower students for success. Every single word matters. And so we try to live up to that every day with our decisions. And I appreciate your positive feedback. Thank you. <laughs> I think this question would be for Omar. Um, straightforward question. Why isn't graduate student representation in ASI a priority? Uh, so I, will, I would like to inform everybody that all uh, graduate students or all students, all Duke paying students uh, actually get to um, run for ASI office. So really any Duke paying student can be, uh, you know, a, a student within our, our positions. Also to the point we do have applications for committees and we try to get just about everyone that applies on a committee as long as they don't have um, class conflicts, right? Then they can't make their meetings. But uh, we do receive a lot of, um, we do receive a lot of requests for, for graduate students on campus-wide committees. And we do our best to fill them as such so that we can, um, you know, make sure that there's student representation at all levels. Great, thank you. The next question is about the Good Samaritan Fund. Um, I'm not sure if I understand it, but I'll, I'll give it a try. So it says the Good Samaritan Fund wants me to take out student loans that I will not be able to afford after graduation. Is there any way to allow the GSA grant to be given to students who don't want to take out more loans? I appreciate that question. So the Good Samaritan Fund is a fund that we have that uses private money that deals with emergencies. There is a care team that looks at these applications and I believe that sometimes they'll advise students that if they have the ability to get mm -hmm. other financial aid, whether it's grants or scholarships or loans, that they'll present that option to you. Uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to pursue a loan if you don't want to and I totally get it. I, was very careful myself about not borrowing too much when I went through my undergraduate years. So I understand that. I think they were just advising you so that you knew that was an option and then you can make the best decision for yourself. Uh, but I would encourage you to keep an eye out for the uh, emergency grants. And if you've already applied for financial aid, uh, filled out a FAFSA, then you would get funding through that if you haven't, then we would ask you to fill out an application so that you would be eligible to receive that funding. But again, uh, you're in the driver's seat. You can decide whether you wanna borrow a dollar or not. And, uh, and we'll do everything we can to support you through the Good Samaritan Fund, through the emergency grants. And then also, again, uh, the student covered is open and we've been accustomed to serving 5,000 students a month. Um, so we are ready to serve students who have that need and I wanna encourage those who uh, need access to food to come. Our alumni and friends have been so generous in helping us to fundraise for the student cupboard and uh, it's there for you. So I just wanna encourage you to do that. <laughs> Great. This next uh, question says, I have a financial hold on my account. The person says it's for only $5. And I was told that I either have to mail a check in or I have to come to campus to get my hold removed. And the question is, do we live in 1958? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. It's 2020, the last time I checked. Uh, send us a note, I'll check into it. I, I, uh, I know that we've been looking at that and trying to make it as easy as possible. But uh, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, if you want to give me more details, let me know. Um, at the same time, um, 
you know, if, if there is something, a, a, a charge that you owe, we would like you to cover that. But I understand what you're saying and we can work together. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you for taking care of our, our student assistance, and we do appreciate you having our back. Would you consider allowing students to work from home if we cannot return to campus? Some were not allowed to work from home. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the question. Um, you know, there are some jobs that can be done at home and some that can't be done at home, and we've been dealing with that for all of our employees throughout COVID. And, uh, and I think it just depends on the circumstances of the job. And what I would encourage you to do again is to talk to your supervisor about that and uh, they'll make the best determination that we can. And if you must work at home, then I, I would make that case just so that they understood the situation and were assured that you could do a great job from home. Again, we're gonna be as flexible as we can going through this situation. And especially if we're in the situation where we're all, for the most part, working remotely, we'll definitely take that into consideration. Great. This has to do with grading with the credit, no credit option. Sure. We were not able to perform well subjects in spring 2020 uh, due to the virus. I appreciate the university's plan to give credit, no credit, option for failed subjects, but if we failed a subject and it could affect our fall 2020 enrollment um, if it was a prerequisite. So the student is asking, will the university let students enroll for classes without prerequisites? What I would encourage you to do is uh, talk with your professor and if necessary, your department chair there are differences in courses and prerequisites, and I don't wanna give you the wrong answer, but I can tell you that we're trying to be as flexible and accommodating and compassionate as we can. And we have made changes to our procedures right now accordingly, but what I don't know is the specifics of your situation. So again, I, I'd urge you to talk to your professor or department chair, if you have any trouble, uh, just let me know and we can work together to try to get you the information that you need. Thank you. Uh, next one, how are graduate students, especially those who are soon to graduate, graduate students, how are they being supported by Fresno State at this time? That's a great question. Well, it depends on the kind of support that you're talking about, uh, the services that I've talked about to tonight, uh, like the student cupboard and our technology access through discovery those are open to all students the library has been offering a lot of virtual support services including su support for graduate students uh, writing support research support um, so it just depends on the kind of support that you need and if you're not getting what you need please let me know and, uh, and I will certainly look into it. We want all of our graduate students and our undergraduate students to thrive. And uh, I know your faculty and staff are committed to that. Um, but if there is something I can do to be helpful, if there's some gap in service, please let me know and I'll look into it and do my best to help. Thank you very much. Sure. I might just mention a couple weeks ago, I was a guest, uh, speaker in the doctoral uh, program in educational leadership and these are all students who are getting ready to finish up their doctorates file their dissertations and they needed a little bit of extra time for their uh, their their uh, dissertation drafts and so forth so I know that Dean Alamillo in the Kremen school uh, made some accommodations for them and uh, you know all of us are are flexible and open and what we don't want to do is to make a change that would then hurt you in some way. So, it, you know, I, I think it's just a matter of letting us know uh, what the issue might be, and then we'll do our best to respond to, to that issue. Great. And we are kind of looking at the last 10 minutes of, of our session here. Um, one of the last questions that came through is regarding 
a uh, fraternity that was suspended in early March. And so the question is, President Castro, what is the status of the suspension of Kappa Sigma? Thank you. I remember uh, receiving a, a number of questions at the March 10th uh, forum that Omar and I hosted. And what I can tell you is that we undertook a full review of that particular matter. And we did find sufficient evidence that Kappa Sigma fraternity had uh, hosted an event which resulted in underage drinking of alcohol by a minor and also uh, may have created an environment conducive to sexual misconduct. And so we made the decision through Dean Kuhn uh, to suspend that fraternity through December 31st of 2020. And what that means is no social activities, no recruitment of new members and so forth. And in addition, uh, the fraternity may not host or allow alcohol on the premises of the chapter house until May 31st, 2021. Um, so a very serious matter and we took steps, uh, appropriate steps to deal with it uh, as it relates to the sorority Phi Mu, uh, which had been temporarily suspended in early March. Uh, we have reinstated them uh, after we determined that they had not violated university policies. And I just want everybody to know that we take these matters very seriously. I think you know, since I've been president, that when these things happen, we've uh, investigated them uh, as quickly as possible and have made clear decisions to address any problems that come up. And I hope that this will inspire all of us to um, to act in appropriate ways. And I know that so many of our students in the Greek system are doing everything uh, the right way. And I just wanna encourage that uh, for them and for all of our Fresno State students as the emerging leaders in California and beyond, uh, leaders don't uh, harass and don't do harm to others. And, uh, and I do appreciate everybody who cooperated with us on those investigations and I think we came, we concluded uh, the appropriate way. Thank you. So one last, this is more so of a statement from Brittany. I just want to say thank you so much for all your hard work and your administration's hard work to fight for us students every day, especially now during this time. And then thank you for being so compassionate and being the boldest bulldog. <laughs> Even during this time when I'm not able to be on campus, I'm so proud to be a Bulldog. That was Brittany. That was Brittany. Thank you, Brittany. That's really kind. I appreciate your, uh, your remarks. And uh, again, this is personal. Um, to see that your success means so much to all of us. And uh, Patty's a, a Fresno State alum. And, yeah. Um, over half of my cabinet members are Fresno State alums, and uh, over half of us grew up here. So this is per personal and professional, and appreciate the uh, positive feedback, and we're gonna keep working hard to support our students. And I wanna thank President Hernandez for his support too. He's had a great year of leadership as our ASI president, and I still remember the day that I was with him in Tulare, uh, and he said, I think I might want to run for president. And <laughs> he did, and he won. <laughs> that, was a, that was a good day. I, I do remember that. We were giving ice cream. Yeah, that's right. Oh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for your service this year. It's, uh, it's been quite an adventurous year, hasn't it? It definitely has. Um, but it's, you know, it's been uh, the time of my life. I've, you know, I'm, I'm very humbled to serve our students. <laughs> Thanks, Omar. Great. Well, Dr. Castro, with just a few minutes left, and considering there's approximately two weeks left of classes before finals, do you have any um, final remarks for the students? Yes. Two more weeks. I know that, I know that you might be feeling a little tired, um, but I just want to urge you to keep focused on your studies. And uh, that's the way to be bold right now, is to stay focused on your studies. It also means uh, reaching out to folks who might need 
support or if you need support to reach out to them. We have lots of services available. All of our counseling services are offered virtually. So again, being bold right now is about reaching out if you need that support. And we're almost there, two more weeks. I can see the finish line right there for us. And uh, if you have any additional questions, I wanna encourage you to submit those on the president's uh, feedback page. And I promise you that we will work together to address those. And you can also connect with me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Joseph I. Castro. It'd be another way for us to stay in touch. And I, again, just want to say thank you. In some ways during this period of time, I feel closer to you than ever before because you're sending me messages and uh, we're staying in touch uh, virtually, uh, which I really appreciate. And I just want you to know that we're here to support you. And uh, this is uh, the conclusion of our forum tonight. We did two this semester. And I uh, want to thank Omar again for joining me and Patty, thanks for all your help. And thanks to all the students. And I wish you a great evening. Go dogs! <laughs> Go dogs! Go dogs. Thank you.